guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you, guitar tips, yeah. Um, hey, my name is Adam Levy, this is Guitar Tips, this is my weekly video blog. I post a new tip here each and every Friday, you can tune in and watch them uh, every week on Friday. You can subscribe. There's a big red button down below that says subscribe. Just click on it and there you are. It's very easy to do and I hope that you will. Um, guitar Tips, as you may know, is sponsored by Martin Guitar Strings. I'm very proud of that. Uh, those are the strings that I use. Uh, I dig them. I play them. And they are my favorite strings. I use a set that Martin makes that's called the Retro Series uh, with a 12 on top. They make other strings that you may enjoy. I just happen to enjoy the Retro because they, um, to me, sound very balanced and true. And uh, that's what I like. So uh, on with the tips. This week, um, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to... Uh, respond to some questions that people have emailed in or um, written in the comments section down below. You can always comment, and I would encourage you to do that. You, you're welcome to email me at guitartips at adamlevy.com. But I would say uh, if it's about guitar stuff and guitar tip stuff, um, why why keep it private conversation? Why not share it so that other guitar students and players and professionals and semi-professionals um, and my mom, hi mom, uh, whoever's watching Guitar Tips uh, could get the benefit of, of, our, of our conversation. Um, you know, if there's something else that you uh, want to talk about, um, it's, um, I don't know what that would be, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, but. I, I would encourage you to use the comments box down below as a um, sort of a first point of contact because that might be uh, something cool for for whoever whoever's interested. Um, so uh, the first thing I wanted to respond to was an email that I got from a guitar player in France named Stefan Alouch. Alouch? I don't know. Sorry, Stefan. I'm sure I'm butchering your last name. Um, but he he said he wrote in to say I'm writing uh, to tell you about your last I'm, I'm writing to you about your last tip, great teaching as always. Uh, his my last tip he's talking about is um, the tip what the drop. So that was the tip prior to this one. It's called what the drop what the drop. Um, uh, great teaching as always. But why did you forget drop two and drop three? I learned a lot about the subject with Tom Lippincott lesson included in the Mike's master classes. Uh, we can find it on YouTube. It's more than two hours, all about the drop two and four and drop two and three. Uh, and of course, there is the great book by Randy Vincent called the drop two book, Best Regards. Um, yes, that's all true. Uh, I, I forgot. That's the, the answer. I, I just forgot. Um, I checked out the video, the, the lesson, the Tom Lippincott lesson. It's great. A lot of great material there. So thank you for... Um, letting me know about that. I'd never seen that. Um, so drop two, drop three, uh, just to try and do this as quickly as possible. We were talking in the, in the drop tip about uh, what are called drop voicings, where you take uh, one note in a voicing, or sometimes two notes, and drop the note or notes down an octave to get a more spread out sound. So if you just drop two, that means if you're counting from the top down, one, two, three, four, we're going to drop the G down an octave. There's an easier fingering for that same thing, which is just this. You could just do a bar and grab the B with your ring finger or your pinky. But visually, it might be easier to see what's going on this way. We're dropping the G down to here, so um, that's, that's one way to do it. You could also... So that's drop two. Drop three is the idea that you're um, dropping the E down an octave. 
And if you drop two and three, then you would get this. So now we went from uh, coming from the top down, B, G, E, C. Drop two is this. Drop three is this. Drop two and three gives us this. From the top down, that's B, C, G, E. And then uh, you could do different inversions of that. There would be uh, four, four variations. So useful voicing drop two and three. Um, just for my own experimentation, I made a little worksheet uh, showing an A minor seven chord in um, closed position in four inversions, drop two, drop three, all in, in four inversions of each of these. Um, drop two and four, drop two and three, and then a, a, there's one more voicing that's drop two and three, kind of a, a, a more spread out version of, of drop two and three where you drop two down two octaves. So like for example, this would be an A minor seven chord with C on top where we, we drop this A, like this would be root position, it's almost unplayable. We're dropping this A down two octaves to here, and uh, we drop uh, three down to here. This is probably a lot. There, I'm sure a lot of you are just completely glazed over this point. Anyway, if you're interested in this worksheet, um, please email me at guitartips at adamlevy.com. I'm glad to send it to you. There's uh, six basic chords in four inversions, and I also wrote out... Um, the first uh, eight bars of all the things you are uh, using each of the different kinds of voicings. So if you're into that stuff, send me an email. I'm glad to send you the worksheet. I'm not going to play through the whole thing right now because I have other questions I want to deal with. So uh, I got a, a, a note from Philip, no Philip Neumann in Germany who asked me how to get into the music business. Uh, and I asked him, well, what is the music biz the you know what is the music business to you? And he said, oh, you know, um, playing local gigs in my town, like wedding gigs, and doing some teaching, getting some students. So, um, the best uh, advice I could offer there's a couple things I would say. One is, just go out and play somewhere. Get yourself a weekly gig somewhere, anywhere. It could be a coffee shop. Could be. Um, uh, I don't know, a museum or gallery, just be seen. Go out and play somewhere on a regular basis every week, every Sunday, every Monday, whatever it is, whenever you have time. And just be there all the time. Uh, dress like, you know, nicely dress like you might for a, a more formal gig. And um, uh, don't put out a tip jar. I mean, if you need the money, put out a tip jar. But if you're, the point of this, of doing this isn't so much about making money, but just being seen and being heard, have business cards, meet people, interact with people. I think I've mentioned here before, uh, there was a period many years ago when I used to play at this uh, cafe in, in Northern California called Daniel's Highland Cafe. It was a, it was a gig that um, I played for a little over a year. Every Sunday morning, uh, I played for three hours, solo guitar. Um, the owner of the of the cafe fed me breakfast and gave me ten dollars and I could put out a tip jar. Um, the ten dollars was not really the reason I did it. Um, sometimes I'd have pretty good turnout in the tip jar, but mostly it was about meeting people. And that that gig that I did basically for for nothing, you could say, led to me playing a lot of weddings because people had now an idea of what I look like, what I sound like, what my repertoire is, what my vibe is. Um, of course, I would also encourage you to do the same thing on YouTube. Um, put up, uh, you know, four or five or seven or eight or whatever videos of you playing the kind of music that you might play at a wedding. And in the description below your videos, make it clear that that's what you're doing. It's not like for some other purpose, you're, you're putting these clips on YouTube, advertising yourself as a wedding guitar player so that when when somebody asks you 
about what you're doing, you could say, oh, check out these videos and they show exactly what you're doing. Maybe build a website that's just about you being a wedding guitar player. Now, I'm talking to Philip here, but I, if you're not interested in playing weddings, this would be true of whatever it is that you're doing. Put up some videos of you doing that thing, doing it well. They don't have to be complete songs. It could be a, a montage. It could be just, you know, a minute of this, a minute of that. Make it look good. Make it sound good. And keep it current. Um, if, you've got, if, you, if you find yourself saying, oh, I did that. I've got a bunch of videos that I put up seven or eight years ago. That's probably not that good or not that helpful you probably play differently now you probably look different now you might have a better camera now than you had seven or eight years ago so um, whatever you're posting do keep it current um, it also shows that you're maintaining your website and it's and you know you're not dead your <laughs> your website is is alive and dynamic and um, you're putting new stuff there if you can get some quotes about who you are and what you do people that you've worked for anybody um, put some quotes up there put a put a way to contact you um, just make it really simple build the simplest possible website oh here's my cat temp come here buddy you are, are you gonna build a website tell everybody about being a cat oh yeah he's a very successful cat I have to say so same would hold true for um, getting students if you want to teach Make a website that's just specifically about you teaching. Get some quotes from students. Put up some video clips of you doing sample teaching. Tell people how you how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> they can. You can email him. His name is Tempura. Tempura at adamlevy.com. If you need a cat for any occasion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and then uh, I had another uh, note from a guy named LaRue Nicholson in Florida um, that basically says, I'm wondering if you could talk about how not to be a virtuoso. Um, I've been playing for many years, and I never was able to play like Pat Martino or Alan Holdsworth. I did try. Uh, just a thought. I really enjoy the tips. Well, I can't play like Alan Holdsworth or Pat Martino um, either. I would say I've had a pretty... My whole career has been based on not being a virtuoso. Yeah, well, I know you know. But anyway... Um, uh, just so you guys don't think I'm making this up. This is Tempura. Say hi, buddy. Show people, show people how handsome you are. Look at that. Oh, okay. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, what do you got to say? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you down. You gonna be okay? All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a guitar tip here, buddy. All right. Just, just calm down. Anyway, um, uh. Geez, I would say just try and surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, write music that features the way that you want to play. Find um, a bass player and drummer or, you know, whatever, a cello player and a doombeck player, whatever you're into. Find people that are... Um... <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to do a tip here. Find people that are, are simpatico and write some music and play some gigs and just showcase the kind of music that you want to play. There's no reason to um, compare yourself to anyone else or, or feel like you're, um, you're, you're doing anything wrong. I, I recently heard somebody say that your style uh, is as much about what you can't play as it is about what you can play. And when you look at it that way, then, you know, what you can't play, don't think of it as a deficit, but think of it as um, an asset or, you know, something positive. You know, think about, think about it that way. Um, and, yeah, 
I don't know how else to say it, except that feature yourself doing the thing that that you want to do and and don't worry about um yeah don't worry about what the you know the greatest guitar players of all time are doing um i'm sure those guys have people in mind that, that can play things that they can't play maybe you you know you, you never know uh, you know um years ago I, when i was a journalist i i had the opportunity to, to interview pat metheny um this is sometime in, in the late 90s uh, and he was talking about his technique which is pretty unusual I don't have a pick handy but instead of holding a pick this way Tim I, I gotta put you down so I can show something here, here you go. okay so instead of playing uh, imagine I have a pick even though I don't this way the way a lot of guitar players play pat holds his pick between thumb and two fingers and it's a little bit sideways and he, he kind of bends the pick a little bit if you can imagine that he uses a thin pick and anyway he was he was talking about his technique and i think of pat Metheny, who's got as somebody who's got tons of technique on the guitar but he was saying that he has thought you know sometimes about taking taking a break from touring and recording and whatever and just like studying with Frank Gambale for six months because he thinks of Frank Gambale as somebody with a with a really superior guitar technique and to me that was that was like um surprising and humbling and beautiful that somebody at the you know at the level of Pat, Pat Metheny is still you know a little bit self-conscious about his technique and wants to work on it and and um, so I guess my point is we, we all live in that space to some extent and um, uh, but try and appreciate what you have and try to worry less about what you don't have um, so there you go so uh, thank you to LaRue and Stefan and Philip and um, if you if you've got something on your mind that that I can address here in in guitar tips, uh, put a comment down below um, and or email me at guitartips at adamlevy dot com. You can send tempura a note tempura at adamlevy dot com. Uh, thanks again to Martin Guitar Strings. Um, oh, you know what? There's one other thing I wanted to mention, which is that um, uh, in the last couple of years, I've put out a couple of instructional videos uh, through a company called Truefire, um, great guitar education company. They've got lots of lots and lots of uh, titles covering different um, aspects of the guitar, and I've done three for them. One is called "50 Low Down Rhythms You Must Know," and it's just some cool rhythm guitar bits and pieces from uh, songs that I like, uh, some well-known things, some lesser-known things. Um, and I break them down and talk about why they're cool and how I use them in my own uh, playing. Um, I did another video for True Fire called um, Rhythm Guitar Makeover, where I take really common, uh, common chord progressions, one, four, five kind of things, and show some creative ways of coming up with guitar parts when you're faced with very simple chord sequences um, and I have another video through them called uh, uh, slow burn soloing slow slow burn soloing which is really uh, about composing guitar solos thinking about uh, guitar solos not so much as an opportunity to play a bunch of, of hot guitar licks but uh, to be a little bit more compositional so you're thinking about having a very clear beginning middle and ending with uh, themes that develop and just playing musically really um, and so you can check any of those out uh, on the true fire website and for a limited time uh, I'm uh, true fire has enabled me to, to offer all three of them at a reduced price I think it the dis something like a 20% discount if you buy all three at once so uh, if you're interested if you're interested in checking those out uh, go to Truefire, or actually you should go to my website, adamlevy.com, 
and click on the education tab and you'll see a little banner there that talks a, a little bit more about these videos. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, I generally don't uh, sell my own stuff here on Guitar Tips or talk about you know my gigs or whatever. I, I, guitar Tips is not meant to be for my own self-promotion but um, I just thought since you guys like guitar stuff that you might be interested in those things and um, so thanks thanks for checking them out. Okay, I'm Adam Levy. This is Guitar Tips. Stay tuned and take good care. Thanks so much.